Hola, welcome back to another Spanish lesson with Senor Geis. In this video, I'm going to be talking about possessive adjectives in Spanish and how you can use them to talk about who owns different things. So first of all, a possessive adjective is something that tells you who something belongs to. So for example, in English, our possessive adjectives are like these. If I have a dog, it is my dog. If you have a dog, we could say that it is your dog. If he has a dog, we would say that it is his dog. Or if she has a dog, we would say that it is her dog. If we had an alien or something like a gorilla that we wouldn't call him or her, we would say that it has a dog and it is its dog. If we have a dog together, we share a dog, then it is our dog. And if I'm talking to a group of people who have a dog, I would say either it is your dog or it belongs to all of you, so it's y'all's dog in some dialects of English. Finally, if I'm talking about a group of people that have something, we could say that it would be their dog. So thankfully, in Spanish, it looks and works almost the exact same way. So perro means dog in Spanish, but if I want to say that I have a dog in Spanish, I could say that it would be mi perro, my dog. If you had a dog and we wanted to say it was your dog in Spanish, we would say es tu perro, it's your dog. If he had a dog, we would say it would be su perro, his dog. And in Spanish, we don't differentiate between the genders when we're talking about possessive adjectives. So if we were going to say that a girl had a dog, we would also say that it is su perro, her dog. And also, if we're talking about something that doesn't have a gender, uh, we would also say that it would be su perro, its dog. If we had a dog together, we would say it would be nuestro perro, our dog, or if you all had a dog and you were talking to a group of people who had a dog, you would say, es vuestro perro. It's all of your dog, your guys' dog or y'all's dog. Finally, if we're talking about a group of people that have a dog, we would say that it would be su perro, their dog. So it might be a little bit confusing that su means so many different things, but it's actually kind of simplifies things because you don't have to remember as many different words. So here we have all of our possessive adjectives in Spanish. Mi means my, tu means your, su means his, her, its, or their, and nuestro means our, and vuestro means your. Now let's focus for a minute on mi, tu, and su, and how we're going to use them in different contexts. So mi, tu, and su, you're going to change to be plural if you're talking about a plural thing. And to make it plural, you are going to add an S on the end, just like anything else that is plural. So mis, tus, and sus. When the thing that you have is plural, it always depends on the word that comes after these words. So for example, if I had a bird, pájaro, I would say it would be mi pájaro, my bird. But if I had more than one bird, I had some birds, Pájaros, I would say that they are mis pájaros. Both of these words need to have an S. If you have a bird, we would say es tu, pe tu pájaro. But if you had a couple birds, we would say they are tus pájaros, your birds. And then if we were saying he or she or it or they had a bird, we would say es su pájaro. But if Whoever we were talking about had several birds, pájaros, we would say that they are sus pájaros, his birds or her birds or its birds or their birds. So we can say that all of these words, mi, tu, and su, you can add an S at the end if the word that comes after this word also has an S. So now let's focus on nuestro and vuestro because they work similarly plus an extra step. Nuestro and vuestro since they end in O, are also able to change and end in an A. So we can say nuestra and vuestra if the word after them is feminine. 
So I would say that we have a taco and it is nuestro taco, our taco. But if we have pizza, which is a feminine word, pizza, ends in an A, we would say it is nuestra pizza, our pizza. And if I were talking to you and all of your friends, I would say that you all have a taco and it would be vuestro taco, your guys' taco. But if you all had multiple tacos, or sorry, if you had a pizza, we would say that it would be vuestra pizza, your guys' pizza. So there are two versions for these that we're adding. Nuestro or nuestra both mean our, and vuestro and vuestra both mean your. And there's one final step, which you will recognize from the other ones, is that you can add an S to these words. So nuestro, nuestra, vuestro, and vuestra can become nuestros, nuestras, vuestros, and vuestras, if the word next, the word that comes after them is plural. So you can have one, if we have one taco, we would say that it is nuestro taco, our taco. But if we had several tacos, we would say that they are nuestros tacos, our tacos. If we had one pizza, we would say it is nuestra pizza. But if we had several pizzas, we would say that they are nuestras pizzas. If I were talking to you guys and I said you all had a taco, I would say it is vuestro taco, it's your taco. But if you had lots of tacos, we would say that they are vuestros tacos, your guys' tacos. And then same thing with pizza, ends in an A, it's feminine, it would be vuestra pizza, but if it was feminine and plural, we would say vuestras pizzas. Vuestras would be feminine and plural, just like the word pizzas. So we have these two different genders of the word nuestro and vuestro, which we can add also to different numbers. So we can have plural, singular, masculine, and feminine of the words nuestro and vuestro. So these are our possessive adjectives. And when you use them in Spanish, remember that you need to change mi tu en su to mis tus en sus if you're talking about something plural. And then nuestro and vuestro can change the O to an A, and also they can add an S, just like the other one.